Looks like everything's working okay. Is everything off and muted the way it's supposed to be off and muted? I think so. I don't have a to-do list. It's empty. Oh, it's because the video capture device is so high up on the queue. We go and put that back there. There we go. I no longer need to terrain the Stompa. I am completely done terraining the Stompa. I have already done the uh, Skitari Slap Shop. So I think Stinky Boys, Cataphracty Terminators are left. I might work on those. I don't really know. Favorite type of wizard? Oh man, that's tough. I think Chronomancers are really cool. Um, druids are awesome. Um, planeswalkers. I'm gonna be lazy and I'm gonna say Planeswalkers from Magic the Gathering. Because they're all one type of wizard. <laughs> Sorry, that's all I got. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm still halfway in the process of setting up, but I should be good to go very soon. I've got my paints out, which I'm afraid to put on camera because the autofocus on this thing is super wonky. And uh, I have made a little more progress on the lad. He looks like, see, look at that. Look at it already. It's already causing problems. We're going to move some things. But that is a good question. Favorite type of wizard? There's so many. I know the Chronomancer in, in the 5th edition of the Dungeons & Dragons is super busted right now. Is it going to focus or is it just going to play this game? There he goes. Kind of. Yeah, he's getting finished. He's almost done. I think, though, his gun is very boring. I think I'm going to go ahead and paint his gun a few different colors today. So that's something I'm going to work on while I am here. I'm not going to be here too very long, I don't think. I don't know, maybe. But um, I have some friends coming over for New Year's, and then I have uh, a turkey that needs to be made. It's been it brined for 24 hours, and then it's been sitting in the refrigerator for another 24 to hopefully make the skin super crispy and hold in all of the juicy goodness that is well-cooked turkey. Because I'm actually not much of a fan. I kind of hate turkey, unless it's cooked right. So here's hoping that I do a good job. Yeah, see, I don't, I don't like this. This is boring. I think all of this furniture on top of the gun is going to end up being red, because red is far more interesting to me. So I'm going to take some red, and then I'm going to take some black, and I'm going to mix this stuff together. darker red that I can then work my way up from. So, I'm now curious. Why was it super important that I uh, that I gave you my favorite type of wizard? Are you doing some kind of survey? Was this just to decide whether or not I should you should stay on the channel? Oh, I know. Psychers. Psychers from, uh, from 40k. They are my favorite type of wizard. Because right now I am super obsessed with 40k. So, the fact that they exist and that they unfortunately live an incredibly horrible life like everyone else in that darn universe uh, is probably the one that most intrigues me right now. The fact that they have to call hell for their powers is very amusing. And it is unfocused again. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Okay. Wabam. Waboosh. Skadoosh. Nope. There we go. I think that'll work. Who's your adventure where you're trying to escape Hogwarts? A Hogwarts adjacent thing. I need ideas for wizards to fight. Oh, okay. Um, dang. That is a good one. If we were going off of the uh, the the, uh, the different types of wizards from D&D, &D, that wouldn't be a bad place to start because I think there are, what, like five or six very specific types of magic. And um, you could make wizards that focus on each one because they have like necromancy and conjuration and abjuration and evocation. And each one is a, um, you know, you probably want to rename them, but uh, each one of those is a very specific style of magic that do very specific things. So that would probably give you quite a bit of working room to start. And then you can also have like the druidic types that are the ones that manipulate the elements. And you could break that down even further. So instead of it just being like an elemental druid, they could be, you know, fire or a fire mage or a uh, life mage. Or I don't know. I'm I have no idea what I'm talking about anymore. But you get the idea, I guess. 
That is a cool, that is a cool idea. Knife wizard, knife wizard. <laughs> okay. Uh, hell wizard, he casts hell. He just throws hell at you. Small amounts of hell, depending on how much he's willing to sacrifice. Um, gosh, I, now that I'm on the spot, I can't think of good examples. Uh, time wizards I always think are really neat, but I think time wizards are incredibly busted, so I don't know if you should put that in there. Maybe a very specific type of time wizard. Like, he can only rewind time 15 seconds or something, because he's not quite good enough at it. Uh, summoners are really neat. You could have one that's a low-level summoner, so all he can summon are, like, crappy little minions instead of actual big dudes. And not even, like, effective minions. Just ones that are really obnoxious and annoying. Knife wizard cast knife. I love that. I mean, isn't that basically just a rogue? I guess if... I don't know. It's kind of like the, the joke about the barbarian who thinks... He, the orc barbarian who thinks he's a wizard because he can cast sleep and he just knocks them out. Shoot them with a gun, try and talk to them, or try and run away. <laughs> well, I mean, if you've seen, um, uh, oh my god, what was that movie called? I can't even remember anymore. Not Fire. Was it Fire and Ice? It was the Ralph Bakshi movie, where, like, a powerful wizard finds old footage from a, from a forgotten time, and it turns out to be Nazi footage, so he tries to model his army after Hitler and the Nazis. At some point in the movie... If you're good enough to, at knife, it's knife magic. I dig it. I dig it. But um, he tries to fight his brother, who uh, is also a wizard. And his brother is like, I never wanted to have to do this. But mom sends her regards. And then he pulls a gun out of his robe and shoots the other dude. <laughs> and uh, ends up killing the main villain that way, if I recall properly. I actually have never seen the full movie. It's something I've been meaning to do. And I've just neglected to do so. But the fact that... <laughs> Hey, Kieran. Oh, Ralph Bakshi's Wizards. That's it. It was called Wizards. I'm trying to help uh, Tobacco Fee. I hope I pronounced that right. Probably not. Uh, I'm trying to help him come up with Wizards so for for his for his game. And the only thing I can think of is Ralph Bakshi's Wizards, where the dude, the wizard, pulls out a gun and shoots the big bad. Because that scene is hilarious, both in and out of context. There was also that movie, Flight of Dragons, that was a um, uh, Rankin-Bass movie. It was done with very similar artistic stylings to, like, The Hobbit. <laughs> Game Jab submission is doing 17 hours. Oh, goodness gracious. I forgot you were working on that. Um, good gravy. Well, Knife Wizard is definitely a good one. Uh, I mean, Fire Wizard is obviously a pretty good one. Um, dealing, talking to, let me see. Talk, try to talk to him or try and run away. Um, uh, Ice Wizard would probably be good, like the Ice King from um, Adventure Time, which I have never seen. I've watched the single pilot episode of Adventure Time, and then I never ventured further into that show. It, it was tonally, at least when it started, it was tonally not something I was super into. Good luck with finishing that. Um, I don't know, Kieran, you got any ideas? Ice King Wizard? It's just a mission process. He's still coming up with wizards to fight. I have no idea how this is going to go. I'm trying to mix a not quite light brown right now, so apologies if I'm just holding and brandishing a mini in front of the camera. I know, right? That's that's a lot of pressure. I haven't felt that kind of pressure since I was in college. Ice King Wizard would be one. Um, Fire Wizard... Uh, how about a techno wizard? Where he just plays dubstep all the time, even though that's not technically techno. I was gonna go technology, but you could have that too as another type of wizard. Um, maybe machine gun wizard to counter whatever guns the main character or the player characters have? I need to make the choose your own adventure to make graphics for the base. Good golly, good luck. Eldritch horror wizard. Yeah, there you go. He has a cat with a name we're not allowed to say. <laughs> oh, man. Lovecraft is racist. Sorry. 
I really appreciate Lovecraft's contribution to horror and the genre and everything else about it, but I just find it really funny, you know, being a product of his time, how incredibly racist he is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The last option just deletes your save file. Um, how about Slasher Wizard? where he's basically like Jason from Friday the 13th or, or Michael Myers. And uh, every time you run, he just keeps following you until you can find a specific place to run to. That follows like the horror movie trope. And if you try and shoot him, you only take him down for a little while. I don't know. What I do know is having a much smaller... Uh, th these, I gotta say, these um, th these uh, liner brushes, I think they're called, are ridiculously, ridiculously good for blending. So if you ever want to have a model that just is the one you're going to spend a million hours on, I cannot suggest more, I cannot recommend more getting a liner brush. <laughs> That's perfect. Muscle Wizard catches the bullet with his pectorals. He sounds like one you'd have to talk to, because uh, physical confrontations will not work on this man. How oh, my hands are so steady? <laughs> um, it's because I'm propping them against each other like so, and I've had like two years of practice at this point. Something that I was taught very early was that an easy way to make it easier to hold your models is to brace your hands against each other. So all that's really moving are your fingers. And uh, it's just, it's, I've, I've spent a lot of time working on this. This has become like my big hobby. So however good you guys are at the things you do, which from what I understand is a lot of computer programming. Um, that's, that's, that's where my time has been spent working with, uh, working with miniature models. I know, right? I was, I was, I, when I first got into this hobby a couple years ago, it was because a friend who goes by Soft Servo on the Twitch, um, he, he was like teaching me how to paint and I was really nervous because it's just, I don't want to screw it up. I want it to look good. And I'm holding them like this and I'm just trying to, and you can see how much more I'm shaking already. And he went, yeah, what you could do is just clamp your hands together when you paint. So if you're holding the model, it kind of braces against itself. And I felt like he opened up a whole new world of me being less crappy at this. But that's a huge thing. And uh, I think my favorite thing is something that I've picked up that I do that I don't see other people do because they're a lot smarter than I am. But if I'm trying to hit a spot that's really weird or really hard, I'll like brace pinkies against each other so that I have some anchor to go from. Because otherwise, again, my hands start shaking. So there's a lot of little weird tips and tricks you can do to help be better at this. And I've just kind of picked up what I can out of sheer desperation of, of wanting to get good lines and whatnot. Oh my goodness. I finally got an air purifier for my bedroom and it meant that I didn't wake up sneezing at 5 a.m. But my allergies are still being awful because it is now 60 degrees Fahrenheit and wet outside, which is a great recipe for my sinuses to be awful. I know, right? It's hidden technique jutsu stuff. I'm gonna blow my nose really quick. Where is the audio capture? There it is. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna mute mute that, I guess. Oh, there it is. Okay, I'm back. So my wife got me watching um, uh, a YouTube channel of a lady named Spike who happens to own a comic a comic publishing house called Iron Circus Comics. And uh, they are the biggest black owned, female black owned, I think, uh, publishing company in the United States for comics. And the owner Spike is an absolute goblin of a human being. She's amazing. And is also really big into Warhammer, which I found out very recently. But um, she's starting to do like YouTube streams of playing video games. And uh, I'm trying to learn how to draw and and the book. I'm, I'm doing suggest using the overhand grip instead of tripod grip with the pen. wonder if that makes a difference for model painting as well. 
I it, it blows my mind that there are so many different like actually recognized pencil grips and uh, it's something I never really thought of until I started teaching and I noticed that a lot of my students hold their pencils and pens differently because there are some that just straight up like they're stabbing the paper and there are others that can use their first two fingers and then there are ones that crunch it down here so I I don't know I think it's whatever you're comfortable with because I've, I've seen that in, in uh, there's, there's a million different ways to do things as our bodies adapt I guess but uh, the one that got me and that I think is very funny is um, there's a painter on YouTube named Lila Mev. And first of all, she's really, really good. And you should check her out if you're interested in seeing like beautiful, beautiful painting uh, with good tips. But secondly, the way that she squeezes her dropper bottles and her, her painting tubes always amuses me because she like holds it in her palm and then crushes it with the rest of her hand. And that just always looks like, hey, Hex Tread, how's it going? It always, it always looks so strange to me because when I squeeze my water bottle or my uh, my dropper bottles, I do it like this. She takes the entire thing in her hand and crushes it against her palm, and it it just it looks so excessive. But I figure just for her grip strength that that might be what she has to do. And so um, that tickled me to no end when I first saw it. But yeah, there's a million different ways to do things with painting. I don't think there's a 100% right or wrong way. Whatever ends up working for you is what ends up working. You crush the dropper bottle. I'm doing pretty okay. Um, I finally got a, a, a air purifier for my bedroom because since I got COVID back in October, um, I haven't been able to sleep in past uh, about 5 a.m. because my body just wakes me up with sinus issues. And I know it's because I'm I'm mildly allergic to my pets, only slightly, but uh, ragweed and moisture differences really get me. And so um, I got an air purifier and I finally slept in until like uh, 7.30 today, which felt awesome. But now my sinuses are starting to get to me again. And I'm also trying to get finished this Dapper Lad before the end of the year, just because I don't want him lingering into the new year. I have a wrist support thing when oh man that hurts when you slip on the ice i'm sorry to hear that um i've got i used to have a bad wrist because i jammed it from falling off the scaffold when i was younger and i think of all things doing boxing helped build it back up because of all of the micro fractures from just hitting a heavy bag and punching a lot because otherwise i was keeping myself um i was taking very good care of myself i was wearing wraps the right way so i had all sorts of support it's already one hour into the new year where I am. Very cool. Happy New Year. Um, I hope that you had a great time celebrating it. It's uh, it's 9.30 in the morning where I am. So I've still got a ways. At about 11 o'clock, I'm going to have to leave so that I can uh, start making the turkey. Yeah, Happy New Year. Hopefully 2023 brings you all sorts of joy and happiness and good fortune and uh, you end up having a really awesome time. Because the last couple years have been hard enough. Uh, we don't need any more bad news. We need good news. We need, we need to hear about people doing amazing things and good things happening. So I hope that is what ends up happening with you in the new year. Okay. Yeah, that shading ended up making the gun look a whole lot cooler. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that. I think, though, I might have gone too stark with that coloring. Much more interest. Huzzah. So now, I guess my goal is to just highlight everywhere I feel like he needs some highlighting. To, again, bring up some visual interest in the model. There's actually technical terms for this stuff, and I don't know them. My wife is an artist and, and, like, has a degree and all of that good, cool stuff. And so she has a better technical understanding of it than I do, and she's helped me a lot. First mini of the new year is going to be an old metal Castellan Crow. That sounds like the perfect way to start off the year. I don't really have any old minis to paint anymore. But, um, actually, you know what? I know, I know what I'm gonna do for the first of the year. I do have some uh, some Death Guard that I need to paint so I can finish off my, my 20 strong Death Guard infantry list. 
but I think I'm gonna put them aside because I have this horrible, amazing model that I can go ahead and start working on. So you've got a Grey Knight's army? Or you just got an old Castellan Crow that you've just wanted to paint and it seems like a good opportunity to do so. Because both of those are cool and uh, I think the Grey Knights are really neat, but I can't afford to collect them right now because I have like five armies. <laughs> Simply intended to get to, but I never played a game with them or painted them. Well, that's kind of the neat thing. Is the game is a bit of a hassle, and to be completely honest, um, as fun as it is in theory, I much prefer the painting aspect of this hobby. Um, games take a lot of commitment, and they take a lot of time. And unless you've played it enough, or you're playing with someone who's experienced enough, they lead to a really long period of feel bad because usually. Unless, unless both of you are very new to the game and haven't done a whole lot of research, um, there tends to be a moment where there's like a, oh, a Grey Knight's army. That's really cool. The Grey Knights are great. They're, uh, they have a bunch of neat things to do. And since they're fairly elite models, um, you don't have to worry about fielding a million of them. So good luck with that. I, I really want to make a Grey Knight's army. I played um, Chaos Gate Demon Hunters, and the Grey Knights are just so fucking cool in that game. So uh, good luck making that guy, that, that Castellan Crow, look absolutely amazing, because uh, he will. It's going to be fantastic, and you're, you're going to love the way he looks. But yeah, I just, I appreciate... Uh, I appreciate how much variation there is in this freaking game. I know that obviously makes balancing it harder, but there's something for everyone, you know? A 30k army resin minis make... Yeah. Uh, resin minis are their own special type of hell. I haven't had to play with too many of them or mess with too many of them, but um, uh, the fine cast ones that Games Workshop make, uh, that ain't it, Chief. Now, I will say... I have a 3D printer, and so I've been 3D printing resin minis, and that has been substantially more successful than uh, trying to fuss with uh, Citadel's terrible fine cast. I have um, a boss Snickrot that I painted a while ago, and I have a um, a Crute and Tau dudes. I also have a Dust 514 kick that I think. Well, that's okay. I mean, no one's on a timer. Sounds like you got some cool stuff to mess with. I have a Tau army that I've played a grand total of twice and hated both times. So, um, I don't play them anymore. I'm actually trying to sell them because, uh, I don't like how they play and I've kind of found the Emperor and really enjoy the Imperial Fists, if you cannot tell by most of what I've painted on this channel. But, um, yeah, I just, I don't want to have them anymore. I'd rather have that money and model count go to someone... I'd rather the models go to someone who, who could better use them, and I'd rather have the money so I can have money. Spend it on models I do care about. Uh... Yeah, Forge World... I mean, I've just watched people do things with Forge World, like uh, Squidmar in particular, and every time I see stuff from Forge World, I get a little sad. I, I have a uh, an ancient... Or not an ancient Rylan, or a, a Thousand Suns Contemptor Dreadnought from Forge World, and I got incredibly lucky, I guess, because he ended up being fine. But I always hear stories of people just having absolutely miserable times with Forge World and their terrible sculpts. Things are always bent or warped or just, in general, you know, very disappointing for having spent several hundred dollars or whatever on the product. But yeah, back when I was first really getting into the hobby, I, I wanted to do an Ancient Rylanor diorama where he's fighting Demon Prince Fulgrim. And um, I started it. It's something that I've been meaning to finish on this channel, but um, I'm really intimidated by messing with foam board. So I haven't really touched it. Like the Demon Prince Fulgrim is long done. The Rylanor is long done. I've got to figure out, I, I was given some medical apparatus and wires to go ahead and try and make a virus bomb. So I've got to figure out how to make that look good. And I've got to figure out how to make the terrain around them look good because it's supposed to be deep in a ruin in Istvan 3. And uh, I've got to figure out what I want to do to try and 
really sell uh, all of that. Sometimes you get a beautiful cast with lovely resin. Most of the time you get the greasiest warped resin, but cleaning them doesn't seem to fix the issue. I know, it's like that that uh, that release agent is now just part of the resin, right? It's almost like they get a little bit of Nurgle rod on them or something. But yeah, I was I was pretty happy with Rylanor, and I ended up having to buy... I think I got his auto cannon when I first got him in the auto... Darn it! And the auto cannon was fine. And then I bought his hand, which I messed up on. I probably shouldn't have done what I did with it. But I really wanted him to give Fulgr Ful uh, Fulgrim the bird. So I tried to model his finger so that he was sticking up his middle finger. And then I realized because of how I placed his elbow and shoulder, you really can't see it anyway. So he just kind of looks like he's clutching at nothing. Which is fine, I suppose. Um... One moment, one moment, one moment. Yeah, uh, Tobacco, you should you should make a, a horny wizard. Have to sandpiper a whole mod. He, he didn't even just have to sandpaper the thing. He had to, like, take a Japanese saw to bits to straighten it out. Um, the Manta was an absolute disaster. And if it wasn't for the fact that he had YouTube content, I, don't, I doubt he would have finished it. Though the, the finished product is beautiful. I feel bad for how hard he had to work to get it to acceptable. Yeah, you should make uh, like a Slanesh wizard from 40k, where all he does is all they do is like make lewd things, and not not too terribly bad, but just uh, something that would I don't know. Maybe I'm going the wrong way with this because that would be funny. <laughs> I apologize. Ignore me. I'm my mind's deep in 40k, and everything in 40k is awful. Make an illness wizard. There you go. Make one that makes the characters have severe allergy issues or make them really sick if they if they stay around him too long. He makes everything rot. Because that's something you can do is the 40k stuff. They've got uh, change in trickery, war and violence, excess and... A feet, <laughs> a feet wizard. That's fantastic. I have a friend who plays... Uh, we, we all play Commander uh, for Magic the Gathering. And he has a black green elves deck in commander and one of the things he does is he'll get swift foot boots out as quick as possible and then as he's throwing elves down on the field he'll equip them with swift foot boots so he can immediately activate their abilities and um one of my other friends who likes to give him crap about it uh calls it the foot fetish deck because it's a bunch of elves all swapping the same shoes And we, uh, we give him endless amounts of crap for it, and then he swings at us for like a million points and wins the game. <laughs> uh, don't mess with elves, they are really scary. Yeah, there, there's nothing else pervy or gross about it, except for when, uh, one of my buddies gives him, like, the, the business about it. It's really silly and weird and dumb, but so is magic. Um, I don't want to, I don't want to name names. But the one who called it the Foot Fetish deck, he runs a, a deck with Galta, who is a giant um, dinosaur that costs less mana contingent on how much power you already have on the board. So if you've got like uh, a 6-6 six, six and a 3-3, three, three, then he costs 9 mana less to cast, right? And so uh, he's playing him with a vehicles theme. Because vehicles are artifacts that, when you crew them with another creature, they become creatures themselves, and you can do things with them, like attack. And, uh, you know, the crew cost is always... <laughs> yeah, they are, aren't they? Yeah, El I mean, the Fae, in general. The Fae, in general, are a terrifying thing, and people should be more afraid of it. All those elves sharing the same pair of shoes. What's wrong with them? But yeah, don't mess with the Fey. Something I've had to learn the hard way from being around friends who, who are much more interested in this stuff than I am. They've done a fantastic job of explaining to me why you never give them your names, you never make deals with them, you never step inside a, uh, a Fey circle or whatever. It's just don't fuck with the Fey, they're dangerous. But, um, what was I just thinking? But yeah, so, uh, like, you can have a, a, a yacht the golden days elves over wrong would just kill your entire family right on your stead. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, don't fuck with the Fae. Just don't mess with them. Be dangerous. Don't make them mad. 
If you see him, run. Just stay the hell away. But um, like in 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 the in the in the magic, you could get a yacht that is like eleven power or, or seven power and eleven toughness, which is really big in that game. And it has like a crew of I think six so, or five or something. So you don't have to have as much power to drive the boat as the boat itself exudes, right? So what he'll do is he'll put down a bunch of cheap creatures and a bunch of um, vehicles and have them progressively crew each other. So he'll have like a bike that crews a ship that crews a yacht. And that'll still end up with, I don't know, like 20 power on field, even though it's all used. And then he can basically cast his commander for free. So yeah, um, Delta vehicles is very silly because the idea of like a troll jumping into a bike and then having that bike jump onto a train and then having that train jump onto a boat so he can summon a giant kaiju of a dinosaur. That's how video games are meant. This is pod racing, you know? He got really mad at me, too, because he's named it Cretaceous Speed Racer because he really, like... Your mind broke it, right? Yeah, so uh, vehicle creatures can crew other vehicle artifacts and turn them into vehicle creatures. And, I mean, because, you know, magic. So, yeah, you can have a bike driving a boat, which is really silly. But, yeah, he decided to call it Cretaceous Speed Racer because he loves Speed Racer and he wanted to have, like, the dinosaur pun in there. And I suggested, why not just call it Chicken Run? Because dinosaurs are chickens and whatnot. And he got really pissed at me because he loves Speed Racer and he wanted to have a Speed Racer pun. But Chicken Run is so much better a name and it's so much more elegant. I love coming up with dumb names for these things. I think my favorite one is that and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what what power the creature is, as long as it's more than the crew cost, then it can crew the vehicle, right? So there's this huge eldritch being called Emrakul the Aeon's Torn. And it's one of the most powerful monsters in the game. It's one of the biggest monsters in the game. And it's like a 15-15 or something. It can kill you in two swats easily. And um, there's another thing called Smuggler's Copter, which is just like this tiny little one-person uh, shuttle helicopter that has like two power, two toughness. And so um, you can have Emrakul, the Aeon's Torn, a giant fathomless eldritch being the size of a continent, uh, crew that thing. And apparently people just get the uh, image of it grabbing the copter and going, you know, Nyom! as it hits you for two damage. There are ridiculous, silly things you can do in Magic. Um, my favorite one is is flinging. Because flinging things is funny. Uh, there's there's a, a spell called Fling, and what it does is it sacrifices a creature, and then Fling deals damage equal to that creature's toughness to any target. So it, the idea is you are literally throwing the creature at uh, whatever. And so I wanted to make a deck with uh, a commander that would take possession of other people's creatures and then throw them back at them. I used to call it catch and release. Okay. And that was something else. I have a lot of fun naming decks and giving them stupid names. That's not what I want. I'm going to need a bigger brush for what I'm about to do, so give me a second. Right now... I think I'm basically done with his armor and his weapons and everything, and now it's just time for me to move on to his cloak, which is the thing I've been most waiting for, because his cloak is fantastic and amazing. And I think it's part of the selling point of this model. Um, getting to do all of this, getting to highlight all of this is going to be really fun, and it's going to be a lot of work, but it's going to look really cool when it's done. Someone asked me a while ago what my recipe was for these cloaks, and unfortunately, because I barely know what I'm doing truly, I and I didn't bother saying it on the stream, I completely forgot. So hopefully this time I can be a little better. I mixed black with uh, a red to get that initial like dark purple maroon color. And now I'm just using a very watered down red to hit the high spots on this cloak. It's the same red. It's, what is it? Um... 
model color black and rojo denso game heavy red so that's that that's where that's going and right now this is just a very watered down version of the red to hit the high spots because that way i'll already have the shadows kind of built in and i can blend my way back down into the shadows if i need to something i saw was that um ninjon has been trying to do more games workshop style paintings more of that heavy metal style and apparently heavy metal starts at a mid-tone and works their way down and works their way up which i think is absolutely nuts i understand why i guess but i i also can't fathom why you'd want to make life that hard on yourself but i guess if you have a gross amount of your mid-tone then you know uh what the base what like the base color is supposed to be so that way when you start shading and whatnot you have a better understanding of where you're going from and where you're coming to you know what i mean i guess i don't know i don't know man i'm just a dog okay so we're gonna go ahead and hit that hit some of that and i'm just gonna try and yeah, it's, I mean, their, their work speaks for themselves. If you actually look at the Games Workshop products, like how they paint their minis, it ends up being very bright and highlighted. And I understand that, uh, how that looks, but it's like the, the, the stuff they tell you on the back of the box is not what they do. Um, they have that recommendation. This is how you should paint this part of the armor. This is how you should paint the skin. This is what you should use. Uh, yeah, they're lying to you. <laughs> That's not what they're doing to get those... Um, to get that quality. Uh, they do much, much more work. Yeah, see, there, there's an example. I can't, I can't pinch my hands together like I was, so I am bracing my pinky against my thumb, which is braced against the handle, so that I can just kind of pivot using my fingers. But yeah, uh, uh, the, the Evy Metal team is an incredibly talented group of painters who, um, have like deep understanding of color theory and are and just rock solid technique and uh, they do so much more work than the back of the box implies so i will honestly say don't ever feel bad if your if your minis don't end up looking like the box after following their instructions because they are freaking lying to you and that is not how they're getting uh the box art they're helping you get a rough approximation of the box art with their uh with their suggestions and I really wish they would tell you that because I feel like they're setting you up for some pretty hard expectations there matter of fact um, I have an infographic saved that was allegedly put out by a former heavy metal team member of how to paint the orc skin on like the flash kits box and if you guys would like to see it, I'll give it a sh I'll go ahead and try and find it. Uh, and you can see just how much more work they put into uh, doing the faces than they actually say on the website. And actually, if you, you know what? Give me a second. I'm going to finish doing this layer. There we go. That's That's the thickness I want. Yeah, it's, it's kind of disgusting how much work they put into those things. And, uh, I mean, I can't really say much because you guys have been watching me paint. You see what what kind of work I'm putting into an individual model. But from what I understand, they'll spend, like, a week working on one dude. With an entire day spent doing something like highlighting the cloak. Or doing the face. And so, I can't imagine spending eight hours working on a single bit of a model. Okay, give me a second. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and find the actual Flash Kits uh, guy. And for those who don't know, the Flash Kits are, I think, the special weapons crew of the Orcs. Um, not Chaos. Orcs. Don't need that. Display Source. Browser. I think I want to display Source. Display Source. Display Capture. Uh, not that. I, not that. None of that. No, 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 no. No, that's not it. I, I don't remember settings. I don't remember settings on this thing. 
window capture? Is that what I want? Yeah, window capture. Okay, speaking of, let's get rid of that. Uh, so now we're on the Warham store. And I've gone to Orcs. Combat Patrol, Commandos, Boys, Kill Rig. They have so many cool models. And uh, Station Forge actually has created some of them. Like, they've made their own version of the Beast Riders. And, that, yeah, Flash Kits, here we go. In fact, there he is. I'm pretty sure it's this model in particular. It's either this one or this one that they're specifically talking about. And, uh... Hold on, eh. Not that one. Like, you can see, they're, they're they're pretty cool looking. They're pretty detailed. There's a lot going on there, right? Um, yeah, it, I'm almost positive it's that one. But, um... What they tell you to do, this is this is what they say. This is how they get there. So there, there's their orc skin, right? There's their orc skin. And they tell you, if you want to get it to battle ready, which is so it's good enough for the table, use a base of wall flesh and then shade it with BL10 green, which is fine. It is what it is. And if you want to make it parade ready so it's even prettier, layer on some war boss green and then some scarsnick green, which, of course, these all have ridiculous names. But the idea is they're saying across those four paints, you'll be able to get this kind of quality, right? And uh, that that's... That's a lie. <laughs> they're, they're straight up lying to you. Um, like, I think at best you're going to get an approximation of of what they're telling you. Yep, it is the boy. I was right. It's that exact boy. Um, one moment. I've got... I need to I, I need to make a folder of just all the crap I throw up here. Uh, window capture. Let's go ahead. Throw that up. Where's it going? Uh, window capture. We're gonna window capture. Uh, we're gonna. We're gonna. This is not it. Uh, Honeyview. There we go. <laughs> Lawyer Wizard would be fantastic. A Law Omancer. But yeah, this is actually what they did to paint the orc flesh. This is this is how they painted it versus how they told you to paint it. They told you to use that one green and then. <laughs> Perfect. Just what, the way you have to beat him is you need to put him near. Uh, there's going to be a countertop in the room, and you need to get him to trip and hit his head on the countertop. Kudos to anyone who understands that reference. But um, but yeah, this is what I mean. Again, vastly different, vastly different than what they're telling you. They're telling you this right there on the right is enough to get to the orc flesh. <laughs> And then they're throwing, th this is what they actually do. That's how you beat the CEO wizard. <laughs> but this is what they actually do to, um, to get the, the face that they've shown you. So the fact that they have that kind of incredibly misleading uh, set of instructions, uh, it, it kind of bugs the hell out of me because it's it's so severely misleading. But, you know, it is what it is. They're going to run their company the way they see fit. And uh, they're justified in doing that. Okay. Oh, you know what you could have? You could have an actual coffee wizard. So, I don't know if you know, but in D&D, there's a, a class combination called the Coffee Lock. And I don't remember how he works, but apparently through a series of shenanigans you can make a warlock that never has to sleep to recharge his spells. And so it wouldn't necessarily be that, but he could be like a warlock or a wizard that is that either makes or is constantly uh, jived off of uh, caffeine. And that can be your coffee lock. And I have no clue how you would beat him, but I like the idea of a coffee lock. Yeah, D&D &D has some really busted ideas behind it. Um, that's one of my favorites, though I don't play D&D &D to find the busted wizard classes. I play D&D &D to create shenanigans and, and see the beautiful vistas and what lands and whatnot and cultures that my friends create, and then set it all on fire through a series of misunderstandings. You know, I think what really helps sell these cloaks is the fact that Drink so much you can't hit him when you shouldn't. Yeah, he just injects caffeine directly into your veins. I know in real life that would kill you, but this is a magic wizard world. So instead of killing you, it just gives you the shakes. 
It makes it so you can't focus on anything. I don't want to give you too many good ideas because you're going to have a million good ideas that don't get finished within the, the deadline, but good luck. So this is still the same red. I haven't actually gone up with the red at all. I'm just using the same red, far less watered down, to try and really hit the high spots and hopefully do a little bit more blending between the high spots and the low spots. And something that always kind of gets me is I don't understand how these artists get these amazingly creamy blends. Oh, okay, fair enough. Though I suppose what they're doing is glazing the ever-loving bejesus out of these models. And just using ultra-thin layers of water over and... There it is again, bracing my pinky against the backpack. Uh, ultra-thin layers of watery paint so that they can get a, a smooth transition between colors which I'm clearly not doing. <laughs> but something I've heard a lot is that your eyes will do most of the work for you, so if you can do a half-convincing transition, once it's all done, your eyes will kind of fill in the blanks for you, and then you don't have to work that hard. So that's probably a lot of what's happening, is unless someone were to actually pick up the mini and closely investigate it, our eyes are doing a lot of the, uh, the legwork for us in filling in the blanks where there should be smoother transitions or you know different colors i mean i think pilkey said it best last time is that uh, colors are made up it's your eyes trying to decipher what it sees and so a lot of the time it really is just filling in the blanks for you and unfortunately that's where i struggle a lot because i don't have an artistic background I, this is by far the most technical I've ever gone with with painting and with art and colors so having to figure out what colors work well with what colors has been an absolute struggle but at the same time it's also been a really fun learning experience because I've, I've reached a degree of knowledge with this stuff that I never thought I would you know so I strongly encourage you guys to, to pick up your brushes and if you have some free time Go ahead and paint and screw up and do amazing things that either look terrible or look great and learn from it so that the next time you do it, uh, it looks even better. Because, you know, not every model is going to turn out beautiful, but uh, the more models you do, the more likely they are to turn out beautiful. <laughs> okay, let's... I wonder... I wonder if I can make this transition a little smoother with a watered down maroon to kind of blend in that layer together. Too many other projects. Understandable. Like, obviously, this is all contingent on you having the time to do so. I wouldn't be like, drop everything, mini paint. It's all based on what your priorities are, right? Like, honestly, for me, this is one of my biggest ones because I don't really have the time to do much else. What I do need to do is I need to start exercising again. At one point, I was very trim and could fit into much smaller clothes than I can now. And even beyond the vanity of it, I just, I, I don't like feeling heavy. <laughs> and I mean, I'm not. I just, I don't like feeling how much heavier I am and how much harder it is to do things than it did, you know, a few years ago. And I'm also getting older, so I've got to take better care of my body. And sitting in front of a miniature and painting it for four hours ain't exactly taking good care of your body. Most of these transitions are pretty good. What other types of wizards could you do? Do a paint wizard. Make it like Splatoon. He just throws huge buckets of paint at you and he can disappear into the paint on the floor. Yeah, I definitely do. I mean, at one point I was an aspiring amateur boxer, and by aspiring, I mean I didn't get very far with it. The Darkest Dungeon board game. Oh, Darkest Dungeon! He paints your bullets out of midair. That's even cooler. He's got the hand from JoJo. Oh, you should make a JoJo wizard. 
He has a stand, and all he does is pose and, and, and monologue incessantly. And his stand has some really dumb, contrived power that when you look at it, it's like, how the heck is that going to be useful? Yes, they do. They have a Kickstarter board game with really cool little minis, and I want them for the D&D. &D. <sighs> it's very pretty. They did a really good job. I actually just want it so I can play Darkest Dungeon. I really like that game. I loved it so much that I tried to make a homebrewed system to play it with friends, like a battle system. And it worked remarkably well. People were really engaged. But it's been so long since I've messed with it, I forgot how it worked. <laughs> I didn't write down the rules. I just kind of house ruled it as I went. And um, it made for very engaging combat, which was super cool. But I don't remember. Oh my goodness, I didn't even notice that. They put in wrinkles where the studs would be pushing through the cloak. So it is now my job to highlight the ever-loving crap out of these wrinkles. And try and make them as noticeable as possible. So that the next person to look at this will see that there are wrinkles that are actually revealing the studs underneath. Okay, the next thing I mixed it with, just so again I have it on record, is I have this color called Buff, which is like a warm khaki. And for any color that is warm, it has been fantastic as a blending agent to help blend colors up without becoming so contrasting that they just look wrong, you know what I mean? And so I wouldn't recommend you use it for everything, but for the things I have decided to use Buff for, it's always looked good. So that is definitely a paint that I suggest you put in your repertoire if you want to be able to do really pretty highlights, or really, really stark highlights, is buff. Oh my god, I, I, I wish I could. I did not have the money at the time when it came out, so I was not able to do something like that, but... Oh my god, I would love to paint Darkest Dungeon Models. Hello, Mantra Van. Good to see you. How are you doing today? We're right now talking about the Darkest Dungeon board game because uh, Kieran's housemate got it and he's got like a million Darkest Dungeon models to paint and everything about that game gives me excessive joy. So I'm super jealous that he gets to paint a million Darkest Dungeon models. Like, if I could, that would be a project I would undertake on this channel, would be, um, painting up the models and making them look beautiful. Yeah, I'm jealous, I said it. You should, you should send some of those models this way and I'll paint them on the channel for content, you know? Just content. I need content. Not like I'm gonna... Yeah, you'd see them back, I'd feel terrible. My son's playing Lego and I'm looking for a color scheme for my Escher gang. Um, oh, that's a tough one. That's another thing I wanted to, uh, to get into, was I really like the Escher gang. I love the splatterpunk look of the girls, and I would love to paint them. I really like the, the neon colors that they start with, the yellows and the pinks and the greens. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a toughie. I don't know, what do you guys think? What colors should a bunch of 1980s-style splatterpunk girls be wearing? Six to seven boxes, half of them are models. Good lord. I almost feel bad saying this, but I still use Darkest Dungeon stuff. There's there's a module someone made that was a monster manual for Darkest Dungeon monsters. And I use that quite a bit when playing with my friends, just D&D. &D. Um, we're playing a game of Kingmaker, which was a module for um, Pathfinder, where um, the characters had to go into completely...